So now let's turn to the Goldilocks problem. Is the Earth just right? Is its combination of properties very finely tuned so that there's only a very rare range of properties where life could evolve? Uh, we need to answer that if we want to define what really is the habitable zone. The standard definition is the range of radii over which the planet temperature is such that we can have liquid water. And that's because, at least on our planet, liquid water seems to be essential for life. Um, you know, but it's going to be many things that might affect the properties of a planet uh, in terms of just its temperature, but also in terms of other things that might determine habitability. So it won't just be the distance from the star. Um, the planet habitability might depend on planet properties. So for example, let's consider Venus. Venus is very hot. Um, it's very hot because it has this very thick layer of carbon dioxide because it had a runaway greenhouse effect. If we had a planet that was lower mass than Venus, would have its evolutionary history have been different? Would it have been capable of hosting life? Or perhaps an even more attractive possibility for hosting life in our own solar system is if Mars was more massive. Mars was, say, Earth size or even larger. It would have been able to hold on to more of its atmosphere. If Mars could have had a, a moderate greenhouse effect, if Mars was today like early Earth, then Mars might be a very comfortable place for life. So it's not going to be just the planet's distance from its star but also the planet's properties that will determine uh, its habitability. Um, we don't know whether anything, bet say, between Venus and Mars's orbit could host life, or whether the Earth is at a very special distance from the sun. When we talked about the faint sun problem. We've seen that the Earth's thermal evolution seems to have been finely tuned. We seem to have been very fortunate that in the Earth's early past, there was just the right amount of greenhouse gases to keep the Earth warm in the presence of the faint sun. And as the Earth evolved in time and the sun got brighter, our level of greenhouse gases have been decreasing with time so that the uh, greenhouse gas decrease has balanced the sun's warming. Looking to the future, the future may be a little scary for the Earth. We're already at the level where our greenhouse gases are not that significant source of heating. Uh, of course, in the last, in the industrial age, we've raised that level, but that's probably going to be a temporary effect when we think about the million or hundred million year time scale. A billion years in the future, the sun will be even hotter, and the earth will be a very warm place. So warm that we might start losing the water vapor from our atmosphere. Um, we're not sure about the future evolution of our atmosphere, and it could perhaps be that we live in a planet that is habitable for perhaps a four or four and a half billion year period, and a billion years in the future, uh, the earth will be uh, unpleasant place to be. There are other conditions that might affect habitability. We've talked about planet size. Um, could comets be habitable? Could asteroids be habitable? What other properties of the Earth are essential for life? We know the Earth has a magnetic field, and that magnetic field both protects our atmosphere from being blown off and protects us from cosmic rays the rate of cosmic ray bombardment would be much higher if we were not shielded by the Earth's magnetic field, and that would lead to a much higher mutation rate. Plate tectonics play an important role in the carbon cycle. Uh, would we be able to have life on a planet that didn't have plate tectonics? We've seen that volcanic activity shapes the evolutionary history of the Earth. Uh, in fact, it is the volcanoes that produce, put carbon dioxide in the atmosphere during the snowball phase 
and probably played an essential role in the Earth recovering from the snowball phase and becoming a warm planet again. So maybe these, in some ways, details of the Earth's geology, its magnetic field, plate tectonics, volcanic activity, um, things that are actually tied probably with the planet's size, uh, play an important role in determining habitability. Um, planet size, of course, also determines the planet's mass and the strength of gravity at its surface, which will determine what gases it will hold on to in its atmosphere. The Earth is not massive enough to hold on to hydrogen, but it is massive enough to hold on to water and carbon dioxide. If we had a planet that was perhaps three times or five times the mass of the Earth, it would have a much thicker atmosphere and at this location would be very warm. But if we took a planet like the Earth, increased its mass, say, fivefold, put it out beyond the orbit of Mars, the two changes we made might balance each other. And it might be possible to have a habitable, massive planet much further from the Sun than the Earth. So there are many factors that likely enter into habitability. So what sets the range of radii over which uh, planets are habitable? What sets, how close can you get to the Sun? When we think about that, we learn lessons from Venus. Venus had this moist greenhouse effect, and it looks as if this moist greenhouse effect uh, could turn on quite soon. If we take the Earth and just move it in a little bit, move it in 5% closer to the Sun, the Sun's intensity is 10% higher, uh, as it will be at this location in a billion years. That leads to much more water vapor in the atmosphere. That water vapor makes the planet hotter. That makes, increases the amount of water vapor. That water vapor then gets high up in the atmosphere. That hot, at uh, high, large heights, a lot of that water vapor gets dissociated by the sun's ultraviolet radiation and the hydrogen begins to escape from the Earth. If we lost all the hydrogen tied up in our uh, water vapor, um, the planet would soon become depleted of, of water, become no longer habitable, would lack a carbon cycle. There'd be no way to pull that carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. And this suggests to uh, some scientists thinking about habitability that the Earth lies just at the inner edge of the habitable zone. And that if we look to our future, our future may in fact be bleak. What sets the outer edge of the habitable zone? How far out could the Earth have been and still retain life? Well, one estimate is that if you move the Earth out by about 30% in distance from the Sun, then the flux from the sun drops by about 60%. The planet gets much cooler, um, cool enough that the carbon dioxide in our atmosphere starts to condense out, and we have carbon dioxide ice caps like Mars. Um, at that point, the planet might not be habitable, but as I already noted, there are a couple possible outs. A more massive planet might be able to stay warm by keeping a, a a layer of molecular hydrogen to keep it warm. And even on a planet like Mars, that is farther out, there's the possibility, which we don't know one way or another about yet, but something we hope to discover soon, that Mars itself could host life even today in a subsurface layer. Even, and there, we know on Mars there's subsurface water, even if there are not liquid lakes uh, on Mars today. Though, as we noted uh, several lectures ago, um, Mars itself had liquid water uh, in its more distant past. So, based on those limits, an inner edge, perhaps just inside the Earth's orbit, an outer edge, perhaps 30 or 40 percent further out than the, the Earth's distance, astronomers define what we call a habitable zone. So, Given the stellar temperature, the properties of the planet, 
which they, we usually keep constant, we then define a range of distances over which life can thrive. So for a given star, we know these two numbers, we make assumptions about these numbers, and determine the radius, the distance from the star, over which life can thrive. I'd like you next to make your own estimates of the habitable zone for a nearby star, Epsilon Eridani. Epsilon Eridani is quite close. It's only three parsecs from the sun. It's a cooler star. It's a K-type star with a temperature of about 5,000 degrees, and its radius is about 73% of the radius of the sun. Imagine a planet like the Earth around that star and make your own estimate of the range of distances over which that planet might have the same temperature as the Earth. And think about where the habitable zone might be around the, our, this nearby neighbor. Um, I'll note that we've not yet uh, observed Epsilon Eridani um, with powerful enough telescopes to be able to determine if there is indeed an Earth-like planet in the habitable zone around our nearby neighbor. Why don't you make that estimate and then we'll talk some more.